Hi there Waltoneers, I'm Jack, this is DSMI Newscast, and as promised for today, we're going to be hosting a Waltoneer Showcase, where you, the Waltoneers, get to decide and steer the topic of conversation in this video with your questions and your opinions on everything to do with Disney, and surprisingly, a lot of the questions were about the Disney and Fox deal, so let's discuss it all up next. So the first question comes to us today from user Mr. Freeman, who says, what do you think will end up happening with a 21st century Fox deal now that Comcast has showed severe interest by outbidding Disney? So I knew that this was going to be one of the first questions which we had to address in this Waltoneer showcase, as there's been some pretty big developments that's occurred in this Disney Fox deal recently. As it was only yesterday that the Walt Disney Company signed an amended acquisition agreement from that of last December to acquire 21st century. Fox, with a newly amended amount which they'll acquire Fox for now being a whopping $71.3 billion in a mixture of cash and all stock options. Which now means that Disney are paying an additional $10 per share at $38 to acquire 21st Century Fox and all of the different assets under it except that of the Fox News division which will be spun off into a new company called New Fox. So we all know why Disney had to do this and increase their offer to acquire Fox as it was Comcast last week offering $66 billion in an all-cash offer to try and get it out from under Disney. And you can see why Disney and Comcast both want Fox, as this massive catalog of content means that with this, they will be able to offer a comprehensive and massive streaming service to the user. And to be honest, I really do feel that it's a very smart move what Disney CEO Bob Iger is doing by announcing that he's launching a Disney streaming service late in 2019. As we can all see the massive impact that Netflix has had on Hollywood, as they have become the major distribution and also the middleman between the major movie studios like Disney and Universal, and then that of the consumers. And Disney don't want any kind of middleman in between them and producing their content and then reaching the consumers, as then Netflix could later on decide what that content's worth and maybe even reduce the price of that content. And that's something that Disney definitely don't want to happen. But personally, I feel that Disney could have gone in an entirely different direction with all of this. By using some of those billions of dollars to acquire Fox, instead on creating original content for a streaming service, as we've seen with Netflix and Stranger Things, and all of the other original content that Netflix are now producing. Now you could argue that the reason why Netflix are producing original content is because it's the licensing agreements with these studios, which means that they can't have the massive catalog of content which they used to have, and so therefore they're having to diversify. But diversification is a great thing in business. And so when Disney launched the Disney streaming service next year with Fox as part of that content catalog, I just hope that the original content is just as good if not a bigger pulling factor in trying to get people to subscribe to this Disney streaming service. But now let's move on to your opinion. As Jackson says, I hope Disney does not get Fox as I think they would meddle with the adult content Fox creates too much and wouldn't implement many of Fox's properties within the parks. And then Emmy Mac 20 says, if Disney is successful in buying Fox, they will become a galactic empire ruled by a Sith Lord and that wasn't even a Star Wars joke, I'm being serious. And I completely understand the concern an awful lot of people have about this Disney Fox deal as you've previously heard me today saying my concerns about the Disney Fox deal, but personally, I do feel that it will end up going through on July 10th when the shareholders manage to vote on this major acquisition deal. And so if it is going to go through, people are asking how will it affect the parks? As Caroline says, what do you think will happen between Disney and Universal if Disney end up acquiring Fox? Because Universal already has The Simpsons. And the simple answer to all of that is pretty much nothing, as The Simpsons and The Simpsons Land within Universal Studios in Florida was arranged on a separate deal away from Fox and 21st Century Fox's dealings. Instead, it was more of a deal to do with Matt Groening, who was the creator of The Simpsons, bringing it into the Universal Studios parks, and it had nothing to do with 20th 
20th Century Fox, who were the production company of The Simpsons. And the last question I promise about the Fox Disney deal comes from TJF. If Disney gets Fox, will we see theme park attractions from certain Fox movies? Now that's a great question, as the impact of Fox in the Disney parks is going to be pretty much minimal, except for the fact that we're probably going to see more Avatar based lands and attractions come to the parks around the world. But except for that, we're probably going to see very little of the Fox IP integrated within the current Disney parks until maybe 10 years down the line and Disney decide to relook at what they've got within their content catalog, redo it the Disney way, and then you might see it integrated within the different Disney parks. But enough of that, as we've been talking an awful lot about Fox and the Disney deal, and there's an awful lot more going on in the world of Disney news, so let's move on to it. As the next question comes from Samuel Baltran, who says, Jack, are you going to be at the opening of Toy Story Land? And while I'd love to be out in Toy Story Land for the grand opening, sadly, I'm not going to be there. Instead, I'm going to be covering it extensively here on DSMY Newscast with the help of John over at Big Fat Panda on the ground in the park for the grand opening. So you can expect some great coverage from Big Fat Panda and DSMY Newscast together. But if the question is, Jack, are you going to be going out to Walt Disney World later this year? Then yes, yes. Yes, I am, as I'm going to be out in Walt Disney World at the end of August into early September. And so if you see me walking around Walt Disney World wearing a Walt Disney shirt, be sure to say hi, we'll take a selfie or something like that. It'll be a great time. And so the next question comes from Michael saying, I have a growing concern about how IP-based lands will hold up as years go by. For example, a Bugs Land in DCA may have seemed a good idea at the time. It's now laughable and about to be replaced. Do you fear Toy Story Land or Cars Land could ever see a similar fate with Ray Data Springs and Toy Story Mania? If not, why? Now, Michael, that's a very good question. As we've seen so much IP being forced into the Disney parks recently, will this last and will this hold up over time? That is something that we've all got to start thinking about. Now, certain IPs I do think will hold up. Like Toy Story, it stood the test of time over the last 25 years. It's as fresh today watching the original Toy Story as it was back in 1995. But what I feel about IP being in infused into the parks is it has to be done in such an immersive way that it becomes its own thing altogether and you stop thinking about the original movie that spun off this one land. As don't forget, when Disneyland originally opened, Frontierland was one of the most popular lands along with Fantasyland as it was sold on the prospect of Davy Crockett. And obviously Fantasyland was just chocked full of different IP. But this is where something like Star Wars Galaxy's Edge may be IP based but is something completely different as it's creating its own IP canon like with Black Spire Outpost which is building off from the different stories as Disney have very intelligently moved away from the idea of Tatooine and Endor and instead moved on to a whole new planet so therefore they can tell their own original story with the Imagineering. But there are two IP based lands which I'm quite concerned about in terms of how well they'll last over time as Marvel is going to be one of them. As Marvel in 20 years time is going to be a whole different type of cinematic universe than it is currently today with Tony Stark and Robert Downey Jr and all the different actors who play those current roles. So how well will that last over time is a question that I'm sure Disney Imagine Engineering are currently trying to work out and trying to safeguard for the next 20 to 25 years. But the next question comes from John Bishop who says, Jack, have you got any plans to expand your coverage of Disney news? Maybe a news site or bringing back the DSNY app? And well, John, that's a great question and it's something which I'm definitely going to be addressing in the next couple of days here on DSNY Newscast with its own separate video talking about the expansion of DSMI Newscast and things which are going to be coming down the pipeline in the next couple of months. Hey, 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 stop, stop leaking it, stop leaking it. Jack, stop leaking it. Save it for the extra video. Okay, right, now let's move on to the next question. And so the last question for today is, what would you change your ad to Disneyland's Tomorrowland to bring it back to its glory days? So that's a really good question, and to be honest, I'm going to expand it on out to not just Disneyland's Tomorrowland, but also Walt Disney World's and all the other Tomorrowlands around the world, as personally I feel that Tomorrowland should be about tomorrow. As let's be honest, even dating right back to opening day of Disneyland, Tomorrowland was the most underdeveloped of all of the lands, as Disney didn't really have any futuristic IPs to put into that one land. But because of that, Disney were forced to make this new land of Tomorrowland back in 1955 all about new advancements and also new technologies. 
and breaking down the technological frontiers and also talking about space and futurism. And so I feel that Disney should go right back to the origins of the land and make it all about new technological advancements and showcasing them on a grand scale instead of actually making it all about different futuristic IPs which they can put within the lands. But we all know that IPs do sell better than new technologies and also the new technological aspects of things does require Disney to update the land on a more regular basis than they're currently probably wanting to do so. But now it's over to you Walton is. I would like to know what do you think about this Disney Fox acquisition deal and personally would you like to see Disney integrate any of the Fox assets within the different Disney parks and if so which ones would they be and where logically would you put them within the different Disney parks and of course don't forget to put the timestamp of where the hidden Mickey appeared somewhere within this video along with your suggestion or your comment to be in with a chance to win one of these DSNY Newscast certified official Waltonier enamel pins. And congratulations to this Waltonier here for winning of this suggestion from the previous video where we were talking all about Tomorrowland enhancements potentially coming to Walt Disney World before the 50th anniversary. And so that's it for today. So go ahead and subscribe down below if you're new to this channel. Hit that notification icon so therefore you always get an update. And if you've enjoyed this video, give this video a massive thumbs up as it really does help this channel out. And I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.